Bears. Beats. Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> What is up guys, welcome back. I'm calling today's video beautifully boring makeup. And there are just so many legacy brands that I've never gotten a chance to try on my channel. And a few people, people who tend to comment a lot and that I've like built a trust with, have said that there are certain things that they swear by. It really influenced me to try some products that are not new at all. <laughs> but actually like they're beautifully boring. Like they're the kinds of things that people just regard as mainstays, but are not necessarily flashy. And even though I get comments from time to time from people being like, do you ever do anything besides a brown smoky eye? Like part of me feels like we don't really get back to basics enough. And if I'm really being honest, it's less likely for me on a day-to-day -day basis that I'm going to really try and like painstakingly construct a super low coverage look with like fingers and like dewy everything. It's so much more likely that I'm going to follow the classic makeup steps, foundation, concealer, powder, contour, bronzer, blush, you know what I mean? And make it really, really like close to the naturally occurring colors of my skin and then spray the daylights out of it with a really, really nice setting spray to get the really nice natural skin effect when I'm done. This is gonna be a face of makeup that's so well-worn and within my comfort zone, but it's a ton of products that are new to me and I might even just turn this into a series. Beautifully boring makeup that people can tune into when they wanna to come to my channel for things that they know are going to look really like organic to the skin and like textures that aren't too like flashy. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump into all these new products. New to me. I did get some really, really glowing responses from you guys about the new natural light filming setup. So thank you for that. You guys get to see me now in all of my glory. But the first thing I'm gonna start with, and this is actually the only thing that I keep forgetting to try. This will be the only first impression in the entire video, but like every time I put my makeup on, I'm not accustomed to using a primer and I just have, keep forgetting to reach for it. By the time you remember, it's much too late to put on a primer. But this is the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. And it is an all-in-one primer and moisturizer. And if you watch Amanda Z, you will have heard of this product. This comes in a lot of sizes. I get the little one just in case it like breaks me out or something. But this is another one of those products that people that I trust swear by. Mmm. I don't think it's a fragrance necessarily, but it's got something kind of like lemony to it and a little bit kind of like natural. You know what I mean? It's got kind of like a natural smell to it. Either way, this is supposed to help my makeup go on more smoothly, blur a little bit because if there's anything that I noticed about the foundation that we're gonna be using today, which is the Armani Luminous Silk, is that it's very, very pretty. I like the coverage level, but it doesn't do a lot of blurring. And I would like a little bit more blurring. Like I'm gonna have the coverage. Ooh, you start to feel it kind of sink in. I don't want to rub it too much. I'm afraid that it's going to pill with what I have underneath it. I don't know, but you do, you feel it, you feel it start to get grippy. That's really nice. I wonder if you can kind of see the blurred texture there. That's so blown out. Maybe, maybe from here. Is that better? I'm going to be getting like troll comments being like, Clean your ears out. Like that's, that's how much detail I feel like you can see. Ah! <laughs> so it's the vitamin enriched, again, face base. And I, I like how it feels. And I am excited to see how my makeup goes on, on top of it. So I got a little guy of the Luminous Silk Perfect Glow Flawless Foundation from Giorgio Armani. Me, me, me. This is one of those recommendations from viewers like you. And I also know that my friend Shelby Wilson swears by this stuff. So that was something that kind of put me over the edge on buying it. I have the shade three and I really thought it was going to be a little too yellow, but actually it's great. Like it's a really, really good shade match. So I'm actually going to be applying this like makeup. You know what I mean? I'm going to be trying to get like a, like a coat of makeup on my face. I am honestly like I go in and out of love with my pigmentation, but I am sick of looking at all this crap right now because I'm breaking out so badly. My period has been like on its way for like 
two weeks. I'm like, as you get old, like I guess menopause is gonna be kind of a relief for me because I feel like my body experiences PMS for like two weeks out of the month. Like I have one, one week of like feeling awesome, like when I'm ovulating and then the rest of the time, I'm just kind of like, why does my skin look so sallow? And like, why am I breaking out like I'm 14 again? Like what's going on? This is from the epilator though. I spoke a little too soon. I was like, eh, it's, you know, better than waxing for me. For whatever reason, it's not breaking me out. It's not breaking my legs out, but it gave me a couple of lizitaroonies on my mustache area, which is not ideal. But isn't that a nice shade match? I mean, you can see, you can see like where I haven't blended it yet and stuff. This to me is very much like the archetypal medium coverage foundation. Like you think of a medium coverage foundation, this is what you're thinking of and it doesn't have SPF in it. I'm gonna be doing a video coming up, guys, and the more I think about it, the more it like telescopes in its scale, but it's going to be a video where I talk about the foundations that are the best for like acne prone or sensitized skin, sensitive skin, especially when your skin is not always like that. It's the things that I return to when my skin can tolerate no experimentation. It's like the safe zone, like coming back home and knowing that something's going to actually benefit my skin wearing it all day and stuff. And I'm thinking I'm going to do demos in natural light so that you guys can see each of my choices going on. But also I want to have like a cutaway of like an overhead shot. I'm going to go through all of my foundations, tell you guys like why I'm eliminating some of them and why I'm choosing other ones of them. And then, and then I'm going to make you guys a spreadsheet, <laughs> another spreadsheet. You guys have told me that that is like actually one of the most valuable things. I mean, maybe I just shouldn't even have a channel. Maybe I should just make spreadsheets. What do y'all think? I think that the ISO is too high. That's what I think. I don't know. Maybe it's just that like I'm that blanked out. And while it's a little bit more blurred because of that primer, I do feel like it needs a minute to like warm up to my face. It's kind of like grabbing on my pores a little bit. I'm not really used to working with a primer and that one does have some grip to it. And so I do feel like the makeup needs a minute to like Mary, they need to talk to each other. The next thing that I'm going in with here is the Bobbi Brown Skin Concealer Stick. I just used this in my last video because I don't know, I was just giving y'all a preview, but I got this in the shade Warm Ivory and the commentary on this is, I like this, it's a medium coverage concealer that's really hydrating and smoothing, but it has a horrible shade range and it looks intentionally horrible because it's got a massive shade range that all skews white and medium, which is really not useful at all. And honestly, like a self-owned, like when you look at the swatches on deep skin, it is a self-owned, like no one has to point it out. You look at it and you're like, that's not right. <laughs> that is something that I feel like with a platform, you're left with a 50-50, right? You can either choose not to talk about something because it doesn't have a good shade range or you can choose to test it and point out the fact that it doesn't have a good shade range. And I don't really know which of those is a better option, but that's what I chose to do with this one because I was curious about it. But the stuff that did appeal to me about Bobbi Brown, it was just the kind of like, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the right word really. It's not even just Bobbi Brown. It's like everything that I'm using today. I kind of am going for classic vibes because I think that some people think of old as a pejorative. And when I say I'm getting old and people are older than me, they're like, God, if you're old, what does that make me? And like, that's never what I want. <laughs> but I, I want to build in the fact that when I say like mature makeup, mature makeup or makeup for mature skin, I'm building in the fact that that's glorifying it. I think that yes, as our skin ages, we have different needs, especially when it comes to texture and hydration, but I'm excited to be entering like new chapters of my life and everything. That's the concealer right when I put it on. Okay, what's stuck in there? Like I said, not super, super high coverage. And you know, I do have a little color cancellation wheel here that I can use to pinpoint conceal if I need to. So says she's looking for a tiny brush, a tiny brush appears. This is like a teeny tiny real techniques by Sam and Nick. Like old, old, I've had this for ages. 
I'm just taking some green color corrector on these like pretty, like that one's pretty gnarly. And this one is also pretty gnarly. And obviously if you can see green, you've done too much, but I'll let that just chill there a little. Ooh, yeah, those guys too. Yeah, I am looking dead in the face today. It's like anybody who wonders what it's like to have a period, it's like someone steals your essence. And pregnancy is like that, but a million times worse. <laughs> Okay, a little color corrector moment. I feel like that was slightly helpful. And now we're gonna powder. Now I have a lot of different powders that I could use. I really, really like the Rare Beauty for a look like this because it does preserve so much of the like glow of my skin. But if we're talking about the classics, this is the Laura Mercier, the original translucent setting powder. And I got it, I think as my birthday gift or something at Sephora. And so that's, that's what I'm gonna be using. Took me a long time to come around to this stuff because the Thrive was apparently really, really similar to it and I had to work my way through that, but I've always wanted to try it. And I get why it's kind of a, a fan favorite. It's because it has, it's like a happy medium. It has a medium level of like adding coverage. It has a medium level of mattification. Like it's not barely there, but it's also not hourglass veil. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna just like make your makeup bulletproof. I just feel like it's gonna work for a lot of like different skin types, like including, I've, t I've definitely watched someone like Leanne, you know, who has oily skin, love this because it can actually like mattify for people who aren't just like me. I'm just like, give me all the moisture. So one of the challenges of this kind of make, like a uh, step-by-step classic style, you know, follow the old YouTube rule book kind of makeup look is that like you just kind of let stuff be a little bit dry and ugly until you get everything on. Because, you know, I do feel like a lot of these hybrid textures that we've gotten treated to, honestly, <laughs> in recent years have been attempting to make the application look better as it's happening and make it easier to see what the face of makeup is going to look like when it's done, like right then. But in my day, we just basically had to like imagine it <laughs> and then rely on like finishing products and stuff to give the glow back to your skin. There was a time in my late 20s when I would dust my whole face with the Becca highlighter, my whole face, and then spray it to death with finishing spray to give life back to my skin because I was using such high coverage makeup. And you know what? It works. It's not the best look in the world and it doesn't feel that awesome because, you know, especially when you're broken out wearing a ton, ton of makeup on top of it, but it was a pretty good solution at the time. All right, let's bring some life back into this face. One of the things that, you know, is beneficial about working with less coverage overall is that you don't end up having to draw your features back on in a realistic manner. And like, if you're as pale as I am, sometimes that results in you looking like a splotchy clown, like color, 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 and then just like a white canvas behind it. And so there is that, but I also feel like you kind of just split the difference because it's so much more time consuming to get a creamy face of makeup that is low coverage to like look balanced and look right because you have to apply things in such small areas, you know? So six of one, half a dozen of the other. We're gonna start with contour, powder contour. We're gonna use my Natasha Denerner Contour Sculpting Powder in 01 Light here. This is just a really beautiful, lovely, creamy powder that's matte. It's very, very pretty. Comes in quite a few shades and they're all, I wanna say, in this like nice, you know, I don't wanna use this brush. They're in this nice cool toned family so that they make effective illusions of contour. I was using the Angie Hot and Flashy A507 for this. What a great shape. What a great shape. So you just kind of find the back of your cheek like that and go forward. 
like that. Up into the hairline. Yeah, <laughs> I'm probably going to learn over time with this filming setup that it's not that my camera's blown out, it's that I've blanked my entire face out with makeup and that I just need to put contour on, stop trying to fiddle with my f-stop. <laughs> I did notice in my last video that when I just casually threw a little bit of blush on my chin, it like made a splotch and you could see it so clearly and I was like, okay, wow, learn something every day. Today I learned I'm a little too cavalier with blushing while I'm talking, <laughs> you know? And even just now, I feel like that looks good on my nose, like to me, but you could probably see like a little too much contour there. I don't wanna look like I've got a muddy nose. The other thing with powdered looks like this is that you can't really finesse stuff on the skin as much, obviously. You can't just like go in there and like blur to blend. And you have to pick up like the right amount of product because it can stamp. And if you don't pick up enough product, it can pick up like other parts of your makeup and drag them around. So. Those are the risks. And it's not all or nothing. I think I'm just kind of trying to make an extreme example, but I mean, that's why I love stuff like Charlotte Tilbury or Patrick Ta coming in and saying like, use these creams with your powder looks and selectively glow where you want to and perfect in other places where you want to. And like, I love that that's where makeup has like arrived, but this is also a lot of people's comfort zone, you know, <laughs> like just working with one texture. So as far as, beautifully boring bronzer. I'm gonna be going in with the Soft Sculpt Bronzer Powder in Light from Makeup by Mario. And I have really, really enjoyed, like really, really enjoyed the Soft Sculpt Bronzer Stick. So this is also quite lovely. It's a very agreeable color for my skin. It's a very agreeable amount of pigment. So, you know, you just kind of tap it on. You don't really feel like you're overloading your skin. It's just a nice, very natural looking color on me. And I just wanna put that everywhere that would naturally get a little bit of sun, but also use it to kind of create a gradient from the contour right here, because that's a cool tone and we're moving into more of a neutral and it's just easy for the eye to comprehend that contour of your cheek when you encourage it with like increasing the coolness here and then moving into a slightly warmer tone there. And then we'll move into an even warmer tone on the cheeks, but then also you get into kind of editorializing with contrast. It's not about mimicking your natural skin tone. Bronzer, I do think, is about mimicking your natural skin tone and then enhancing it because my skin doesn't really do this on its own. <laughs> or if it does, it's only with pigmentation. It's not good. And there is something to be said for wearing more coverage in the summer. I know that it seems counterintuitive because everybody wants this like dewy summer complexion, but actually all mineral SPF is, is like very high tech powder, right? It's made in a way that it covers really consistently. And so if you're adding coverage, you're adding a physical barrier on your skin with makeup as well, it can only really help, right? With sun protection. Now don't quote me on that. That's just what I imagine. I'm not a scientist. Look, my face is back in the chat. <laughs> I'm not just a reflective surface anymore. So that's nice. Okay, so that is a really, really pleasant natural amount of bronze that doesn't make it look like my neck is a different color than my face. And it also doesn't make me look like unnaturally mattified. And I can see a little tiny bit of my freckles coming through. We love beautifully boring, we do. So as far as blush is concerned, I want something that's going to look just natural, just so pretty and glowy and natural. And I just have loved the boringness of these Clinique pop, the cheek pop blushes. This is Heather Pop. I wanna pick up like all of these. Once you guys finally enlighten me to the fact that like they're pressed really hard. So you have to kind of work to pick them up a little bit, like at least initially. Once I was enlightened to that, I was like, okay, this is actually a phenomenal 
like wash of blush. Like it's super easy to control. You see? Just tippy tap, tippy tippy tap. I think I'm inadvertently refraining from talking while blushing because I'm afraid that I'm gonna overdo it. And blush placement is everything. You don't need to put blush on exactly the way I put blush on. It's about kind of seeing where it flatters your face because you can kind of pop it up higher and that's going to kind of, you know, lift that appearance because you're working with something ostensibly warmer, right? Warmth comes towards you. So that's going to make it look like it pops forward. And so you can choose to have this part pop forward or this part pop forward. Like my face is pretty flat, honestly. Like my cheeks are very flat. And so having like right on the apples of my cheeks flatters, I think, flatters my face. But for some people, they wanna leave like almost this whole triangle right here in the center of their face without any, like you see Tati do that. And what it does is it kind of elongates upwards. I don't need elongation, okay? <laughs> I already have kind of a long rectangular face. I don't need that. I kind of like want a little bit of cherub happening. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to solve for anything either. Like I'm not saying your face is wrong. Here's how to fix it with blush. I'm just saying like if how I put blush on feels really, really weird to you, it's not your imagination. It's just your preference. You know what I mean? And, and there's no wrong answer. There are no rules. Put blush on your eyeballs. Don't put blush like in your eyeballs. That's where we're gonna stay for the blush at the moment because we all know that once I get eyes on and everything, I'm gonna want more. But I also wanna leave it open so that I can do different colors if I want to, you know, like a Milani Luminoso or something to finish it off. And this shirt is actually from Red the Runway. I don't know what the brand is. I will, you know, figure it out and, and put it down below. But it's been repaired. It's obviously quite worn. Like I don't wanna keep it or anything, but man, what a fun like little thing to inhabit today. It's got like puff sleeves and like this cool little like lapel situation. I know that I said that we were gonna go into eyes next, but I don't even know if I said that. I thought it. Did you hear me thinking it? I actually wanna go in with this next. This was the thing that caught my eye. I was like, since when do I salivate over a highlighter? Never, never. I'm never scrolling Instagram or like, you know, new releases on Sephora. I'm like, oh, well that's a shiny highlight. But there was something about this that just said that's a natural glow to me. And this is the highlighting powder in pink glow from Bobbi Brown. It is, it's just so pretty, isn't it? Wow, it's too close, it's too close. It keeps blowing out. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> my camera is like, that's a person, like literally thinks this part of my ear is a person right now. Ooh, okay. But anyway, I took a chance on this. This is also a mini. And I was happily surprised by the fact that it doesn't have like glitter. It doesn't have glitter. No, no, does that help? Can you see that? You can see it, there it is, yeah. There's no glitter. It's just this like beautiful blur. Oh, I even like put it under my eyes. Do you see that glow versus that side and just how like nice and smoothed out everything is? Yeah. <laughs> That's a mature lady highlighter <laughs> because it's not gonna accentuate a bunch of nonsense, you know? A bunch of stuff that you didn't know was there to begin with. And boy, does it just come up out of nowhere. I hate to be that person that's like, I'm 35, I'm old now. But like stuff just started happening, man. It was like, it was like clockwork. <laughs> I was like, why am I so sallow? Where did this texture come from? Why do I have milia? Like. Yeah. So now that we've done that, and I love the way that this is looking, I'm going to now talk about these. This was one of the most exciting things for me. I, I know that these exist a lot of places, but there was something about this shade range for the Bobbi Brown, like the matte eye crayons. It says long wear cream shadow stick. This one, I did get a shimmery one as well, but this happens to be the shade Nude Beach. And it's super, super matte, and it's like a pinky nude for my skin tone. And they just have so many of these very nuanced undertone, very, very pale colors like this that are supposed to not only, you know, serve as a standalone eyeshadow, but also be like a really, really good budge proof base. So I've really enjoyed this one. The sparkly one, I'll use it, but like it's nothing to write home about. These are neat. 
<laughs> I like the way that they look and they do give me like a default jumping off point for the rest of my makeup. I wanna get one that's a little bit warmer. I wanna get one that's a little bit browner, things like that. But it was like, I got excited about the idea of something being this close to my skin tone. So I also dug this brush up. This is another Real Techniques by Sam and Nick. It's called the Instapop Shade Brush. This probably doesn't exist anymore, but Real Techniques makes similar shapes all the time. I just like this because it's like a medium sized eyeshadow brush that is very much like cream oriented, the way that it's so densely packed duo fiber and synthetic. And I love just how barely there that is. And I'm essentially using that to build a contour where my eye naturally has it itself, right? So it's like kind of more shadowy here, blends a little lighter towards here, blends a little lighter towards here, but like mainly concentrating it right in the crease. But there's something really, really phenomenal about that if you choose the right color kind of thing. And it's just very similar to the color that my cheeks like to go when they get blush on them and stuff like that. And it is really, really nice and long wearing. Very, very easy to manipulate. You guys know I'm not typically one to go for a cream shadow, especially if I have to manipulate it with my fingers, it's just not gonna happen. But this spreads just enough, feathers at the edges really, really evenly, and I liked the shade range. I always end up with cream shadows that are too dark for my skin. And not because that's all they have, it's just because I think that that's what's gonna look good and I, oh, I it's like one of those mistakes that I make over and over and over again. And I finally decided, I was like, okay, I'm going to, overcome my fear of putting on an eyeshadow that doesn't show up. I need to like re-gauge my expectations. Most things are going to show up on me. I have just very, very pale skin. Like I, I need to just like change my estimation of that. The problem is not usually the formula. It's the fact that I'm working with something that isn't meant to be super high contrast, you know? So that was super, super easy. It kind of blends out like a concealer stick. It's like having a cool toned pinky nude for my skin concealer stick. And I just feel like it's a phenomenal, like, again, jumping off point for everything. Or I could just put mascara on and call it a day. Like, you know, do some brows, but like, it could be a really, really pretty standalone and it has a nice kind of blur to it that I don't feel like it's kind of getting caught up in my, eh, you know, my trouble spots <laughs> where my eyes just decided like, you sleep weird, we're gonna do this thing and it's just gonna stay there now. It doesn't gather as much. And then I wanted to go in with something green today on my lids and make that kind of the excitement, but also, you know, stay within the colors that I think are really flattering on my skin tone. And so I have, I used this recently in my MAC video, but this is the Dazzle Style Dazzle Shadow from MAC. And it's green in that, that's, you know, a color that went into, hello? It still thinks my ear is a person. There we go. It, it, you know, there's green in it. It was a color that was used to mix this particular kind of gold, but on my skin, you're not going to get green. It's a great color for brown eyes. And it also pops really nicely off this sort of relatively pink color. So that's what we're going to go with next. I just need a flat brush. This is the Angie Hot and Flashy by BK, other way around, A501. So that almost is going to act as an eye primer, right? And the beauty of the MAC eyeshadows is even the Dazzle shadows pick up on a brush, which is lovely. So just going to gently create like a green smoky eye here. And you can build the heck out of this stuff and really get almost like the appearance of what that looks like in the pan on your eye. But what I'm going for here is something that's just sort of layered. So you see that green against that pink? You wouldn't think that they'd go together, but they look pretty nice, don't they? And I'm just gently kind of gradiating that so that it's not going all the way into my inner corner because my eyes are desperately close together. <laughs> they don't need any help. Now I just need a smaller blender brush. I'm not going to pick up any more product. I'm just going to blur 
anywhere that I couldn't get to with that flat brush without pushing the product around too much. I feel like she's shedding product again, but it's okay. And then I do have, like I said, the shimmery version here. This is the shade Moonstone. And again, I was really, really trying to overcome my fear of something being invisible on my skin. And I might've gone too far <laughs> because it's basically just like a very, very, very soft wash of shimmer that like is almost invisible, but I'm just gonna use that here. Ooh, I, I do like that it adds a little bit of warmth though, especially if what you're looking for is like a, a pop illusion. It's going to add just a little bit of like yellow and that's going to help make it look like your eyelids have more depth to them. See that? But I don't want to do too much. It can take over. And do I want to do that on my brow bone? I did just tweeze my eyebrows, so maybe. Is that helpful? Did that do something good? That's the one thing though. I almost always second guess myself when I'm thinking about putting a shimmer up there because like it's going to call out any stubble, any stubble. Before I hop off and do my brows and everything, I'm going to just take something small and really just like add some smoky drama underneath my eyes. Taking the Sephora Pro Shadow 18 for this. And I am taking a little bit of like extra time to fill in that bald patch. <laughs> Loves to like not grab product right there in the corner. But do you see how it's not really reading green? I feel like sometimes that's the issue though with things like, you know, sh the Chanel blurry quads. I have blurry mauve, mauve. And it's the problem is with the exception of like that red right there, they kind of all look the same on me. They all kind of go this like charcoal shade on me. And it's because I think that they're overcompensating for the fact that colors look more natural when they're more muted on your skin, but that when your skin mixes with something, if it's a sheer wash of color, it's gonna mute it itself. I just feel like that, like I returned the Dior New Look palette and stuff like that be for the same reason. I just got it on my eyes and I was like, this isn't useful because these are all the same color, you know, in effect. Really take extra pains here to get the blend right. I'm going to do my liner and my mascara and my brows and please enjoy the music. <laughs> struggling with like everything looking a little bit too bright in I'm sorry that's why I keep looking at my monitor hmm actually I want to do more blush <laughs> before we before we set my face so I'm going to grab I think Milani Lumino so I think that's that's the ticket also the eyeliner <laughs> typically I do eyeliner with this like putty eyeliner from Guide Beauty 
But today I wanted to go with one of the, you know, favorites that everybody talks about and that is the Victoria Beckham and Coco. I have it, but I hardly ever use it. But like, so gorgeous, so easy to manipulate that like I <laughs> drew a bigger wing than I meant to like really easily. I was like, oh. <laughs> Oh, that happened. That escalated really, really quickly. So yeah, um, I kind of dig it though. It's like, I'm not mad. I feel like very like 1970s right now. <laughs> and I'm loving it. Like early 80s. So here we go with the Luminoso. I'm just applying that kind of here-ish. I don't want too much sheen right on the front of my cheeks. trying to think. I want something matte, sort of here-ish. Is that the one? This is the Item Beauty. It's that funky powder cream. Get a little, just a little tiny bit of life right at the front. Could use the Bare Minerals, Balance and Blur, that coral shade, very, very similar. I just wanted something that like looks healthy without adding like a whole lot more, but also wondering, also wondering why my ISO is being so obnoxious. Y'all, I don't know. Give me some tips, those people out there who know what's going on with my camera. Give me some tips for shooting in natural light. Fix plus, it fixes. Plus it's really, really good. What shall we do on Gaggy's lips today? Something beautiful, oh, that's right. I got something beautifully boring. <laughs> I have something new to use and that is the Bobbi Brown Crushed Lip Color. Another one that I hear about all the time. And this shade is buff and it looks extremely similar on the skin to my khaki lip liner. My khaki lip liner is browner but they're, okay, they're not that similar. They just look really similar on my lips and they complement each other really well, I feel like. So I'm going to do that combo here. By the way, I mute over my lips. Like when, I, when I'm applying lip stuff, I don't put music, but I also just mute it because lip noises, mouth noises. <laughs> if you want me to put music over it, I can, but I just, I don't know. It feels like a very short period of time to do, to like make you guys listen to like a very strange spurt of music. Maybe I need to like sing a song, like khakis, mouth noises, music, and like, that's it. <laughs> like, and then, <laughs> anyway. Khakis, mouth noises, music. I was not a particularly deaf woo, application of that. <laughs> because that particular one, I have two of them, but that one is like broken inside. So it's like, if you push on it too hard, it just goes nee! and like tries to escape the tube. So yeah, it's not, it's not perfect, but that's okay. Going in with buff. This is like a medium pigment matte. So at the risk of there being something that I just don't see, <laughs> I think that that's the look today. We haven't really taken great pains to like sculpt my face or like bronze me in a way that makes me look kind of like not myself. You know, I'm still quite pale. I really wanted to stay with my skin being the same color as like my neck and not having to do too, too much work. So I stayed on like a pretty light hand with everything. I think that one of the biggest things about wearing beautifully boring makeup and also having it still look really effortless, even when you have put this much effort in, is playing close to your skin tone. And that's something that I did not even realize how far away from my skin tone I was playing in a lot of ways. And that's not necessarily a, a bad thing, but it does make more work for you. It is easier to blend things that are not just closer to your skin tone and undertone, but closer to your skin tone in like lightness or depth. And for me, especially like focusing first and foremost with a cream eyeshadow that is like so close to my skin tone, I probably couldn't even wear it as a lipstick. You know, it's that light. It 
helps set the tone for the rest of the way that I'm looking at my makeup as it's going on. And I don't really feel like I have to kind of keep building shadow and light in order to like balance out the illusion. So let's go one by one on these and I will give you guys my final thoughts on them. Obviously I don't have final thoughts on the primer, but from the times that I have worn this, I will say that this definitely improved it. It did take a minute for it all to warm up together and I always will say when there's that much powder on my skin, nothing really looks totally right until I've got some setting spray on and also that kind of face of makeup always looks better a little bit later, like, you know, like an hour in or something. It just needs a chance to warm up to your skin. So like, don't be dismayed if you put it on and you're like, this didn't perform like anything magical, right, on application. Lots of foundations that do provide coverage and blurring do need a little bit of time before like all of those features kick in, you know? So all that to say, I do think that this helped. Time will tell whether my skin likes it or not, you know? And I, I like this. This is awesome, actually. Like, I don't think that there is a fragrance in here. You know what I am gonna do? Here's a nifty trick. Take some setting powder, put it in your freaking hair. <laughs> because all of my setting spray and everything like greased up the front of my hair. Just let that chill for a sec. You know. There we go. That might help a little bit. And that's the rare beauty that I'm using. Meep, 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 meep. Any, any hoodles. So yeah. I really, really like the Luminous Silk Foundation. I love the coverage level. I got a phenomenal shade match with shade three. And I also really like this Bobbi Brown concealer and I'm gonna just keep harping on it. Every single time I talk about this, I'm going to I'm going to mention the fact that she needs to improve this shade range because she obviously, not she, Bobbi Brown is not at Bobbi Brown anymore. They, the Bobbi Brown team, they need to fix this shade range because this is a great formula and it's quite, annoying that it leaves so many skin tones out. Staying with Bobbi Brown, this is a sleeper hit. And it might not even be a sleeper hit for like people who are a fan of this kind of makeup because to me, that was kind of one of the things I felt like I needed to know about, you know? I was like, okay, well, it seems like everybody knows about this but me. So that was why I tried it and it gives just the most unbelievable glitter-free blur on the skin. So gorgeous, so natural looking but also like a little better than nature, you know? <laughs> yeah, so really, really like this. And this is just the mini. And then this lipstick, it's not like the most comfortable thing in the world because I do prefer something that adds a little bit more moisture to my lips, but like there's no reason that I couldn't put a balm underneath it. It just doesn't possess that capability on its own. There are definitely formulas where, I mean, this isn't matte, but this is like the, what's it called? The lip chic from Sean Takai. This is a much more like nourishing formula. This is just not a particularly nourishing formula, but man, I like that color. It's a good color. It's kind of interesting how it seems to sort of like mimic the little bit of like coral that I have on my cheeks, but it is by no means a coral color. It's just a really, really nice flattering peachy pink on me. So love that, love that for me. And even though I don't feel like these necessarily like perfected my eyes. I felt like I still, cause I don't know if you guys saw that, but I did go in with just a little bit. I lean really hard on the Monochromance palette. Like this shade right, oopsies, or this one right here and this one right here. These two kind of like mucky dark on my skin, like contrasting on my skin kind of shadow tones. I lean on those to finish out an eye look because they build a really beautiful illusion, but they're also so smoothing. And that's what I need is like, no matter what I do on my eyes, I almost always feel like I need like an extra step to help smooth it. So that's why I did that. But the colors are beautiful. The wear time is there. And I genuinely like the malleability of the formula. It is just very, very easy to use, which you guys have seen me struggle with some cream and stick shadows before. So I, I speak highly of these. I like them very, very muchly. And I also like that, I mean, I'm sure I, I know a lot of brands 
also have matte versions. And someone was just telling me about the caviar stick from Laura Mercier in the mattes specifically and how great they are. So I will try those as well. I've only tried like their shimmery ones and I just kind of found them to be underwhelming because they do accentuate so much texture on my eyes. So the mattes are a lot more intriguing for that reason. So I'm not saying this is like the most special thing in the world, but definitely take a look at the colors because the colors are really, really interesting in a boring way. <laughs> I think that that concludes our coverage, so to speak. But yeah, guys, let me know if this kind of trying new makeup plus tips here and there, you know, of beautifully boring makeup is a theme you'd like me to run with because it does end up becoming kind of a soft glam thing. But I like just highlighting formulas that are beautiful and reliable that don't get talked about because they don't come out with new products that often, you know, but that still deserve recognition. So I, I really, really enjoyed like pretty much everything I put on my face today. And I hope you guys did too. <laughs> and if you did enjoy this video, found it fun or what have you, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.